Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, from our Lord, from our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. From Joshua, we hear, Moses, my servant, is dead, God says to Moses. <coughs> Next word, arise, get up. Go over the river, the Jordan River, the right by the river. You and all this people, the thousands that are with them, into this land that I, next three words, am giving to. Doesn't say might. Doesn't say the land you have to go get. The land I am giving to you. It's a very clear declaration, isn't it? He's saying, let's go, let's do this thing, let's go in. Think back to, for some of you that's yesterday, some of you it's a week or two ago or a decade or two ago, maybe when you were young, maybe somebody had to shout to you, get up, get up, get up. <coughs> the very first time. I got up from behind the pulpit in my first church and I walked down the aisle and I was preaching in the aisle. And I stood right about at this spot in that church years ago. And there was a man right here, I've told you this story before, sitting right about here, one of my elders. Whenever the sermon came, he would do this. And afterwards, he'd wake up. And after church that day, he was awake for the whole sermon that day, by the way. He said to me, Pastor, with a smile on his face, he said, I can't sleep when you're standing by me preaching. <laughs> that was a long time ago. That was my first church, my first year. I still remember that. The smile on Richard, his name is Richard, Richard's face. And his wife, of course, nudged him. Hey, quit it, Richard. And I said to him, well, I guess I'll be there next Sunday too. <laughs> to keep you awake, Richard, because you tend to take a nap. He said, well, yeah, but I'm listening. <laughs> We're listening to you too, Richard. Nice. <laughs> We don't know what's like it when somebody says to us, get up. Maybe we have other plans. Maybe we'd rather just kind of stay put. Maybe we don't want to get out of bed. Maybe we don't want to do what God has in mind for us to do. The people of Israel have been kind of cool in their heels for the past 40 years. Because God took them to the edge of the promised land. He said, here's the land I'm giving you. Let's get ready and go get it. And they sent in the spies to check it out. They came back and said, no. The people living there are bigger than us. They'll kill us. We'll lose. So they said no to God. We're not going in. And so God waited then until all of those who rebelled were dead and gave the land to their kids. And as he waited, the time was now. The time had come. And he says now to their new leader, Joshua, get up. Let's get going. Let's do this thing. And so we see God stirring up the leader, first of all. Just like we see with the bowl, stirring it up. And then he says, and these words are amazing. Think about these, this next slide. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon 
I have given to you, just as I promised to Moses. So everywhere you go, no matter yesterday with all kinds of scratchy. Everywhere you go, you set your foot there, it's yours. That's kind of weird. What if we set our foot there and there's some big guys there? You look at the map, and I apologize, I searched for half an hour on the internet, and I couldn't find a real good, real clear map that was going to show up on the screens. And this one's wider than it should be because I made it try to get bigger, so it's kind of out of proportion. But, but the, what you see here is all the different colors that aren't just the beige. That's what it talks about. All this is going to be yours. Every place you step your foot. And if you see where you see the Dead Sea at the bottom and you see Reuben, Gad, and Manasseh on this side. Those guys already have their land. But he told their leaders, even though you already have your land, you need to leave your wives and kids behind and go with the rest of your family to help them take their land that I'm giving to them. When that's done, you can go back home to your wives and children. But every place you step, that's going to be yours as long as you follow me faithfully. It says, no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as there was with Moses, he's saying to Joshua, so will I will be with you. I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. And then he says... Be strong and courageous. For you shall cause this people to inherit the land that I swore to their fathers to give to them. Think about this. He just got done saying to them, I'm giving you the land. Every place you set your foot is going to be yours. No one's going to be able to stand against you. But then he says, be strong and courageous. It seems kind of weird that after all of these assurances, he has to say, be strong and courageous. And even in the next verse you see here, he says, only be strong and very courageous. What he's telling him is, all this is going to happen, but you're going to see some scary people. You're going to see some scary circumstances, like the mighty walls of Jericho and so on. But be strong to listen to me. Be courageous. Do what I tell you to do, even if it seems like a really stupid plan. And we'll see that again in a few weeks with Jericho, what a strange plan that is. They listened to what God said. Being careful to do everything according to the law, the law of Moses. <coughs> As there, do not turn from the right hand or the left, that you may have good success wherever you go. You see the footprints? You see the footprints on the, on the slide? See the ones going left and right? Which ones, based on that text, are going the right way? The middle ones. Because they're going straight. They're following the way God said go. They are not wandering off on their own. The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. You will meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to it all that's written in it. So he's saying to Joshua, you will be victorious. You will win, but only as you follow me. 
How many of you have ever held a shield in your hand? A shield. A couple of you. Maybe you've seen pictures or TV shows or what have you. Somebody has a sword and a shield. Maybe they have a, a spear to go with it. But let's say this is my shield. And here is my sword. Ha! <laughs> Ha! Who said that? Ha, <laughs> ha, Yeah. If my shield is here and the weapon comes at me, it's okay. But if, if I hold the shield out here and I'm going like this, are they going to aim for the shield? Only if they're really stupid. Let's hit the target. No. If the shield is over here, they're going to aim right here. So what, what he's saying here is, I am going ahead of you. I will lead you victorious in battle. But if I'm leading this way and you go off that way, <laughs> or if you go off this way, same thing. Follow me and you will be victorious. Then you will make your way prosperous, and you will have good success. Now that's with Joshua, and now he has Joshua shifting gears. So Joshua, now that he has been given orders by God, he commands the officers of the people, pass through the midst of the people, and command all of them. In the next slide, what's the first word? <coughs> Read that whole slide. Now, wait a minute. Within how many days? Three days? We've been hanging around 40 years. And now we have three days to get ready? Ah! That's not going to work. We're, we're not going to be ready. But they're fine. They're willing to listen. How would you be? If we at Faith Lutheran Church said, three days from now, we're going to change everything about what we do. We're going to step out in a bold mission and reach to the community in all kinds of ways that might have people coming into this building that look different from you, that sound different from you. They may not be your idea of what should be in the pews, but we're going to do it in three days. And some might say it's about time. Others might say, well, I guess I better go find another church because I don't want somebody sitting in my pew or next to me in my pew. But God called them, and he said, now is the time. You, we told your parents and grandparents 40 years ago, let's go do this, and they said, ah, we aren't prepared, we aren't ready, we aren't equipped we can't do that. And so he let them suffer for the next 40 years, just kind of hanging around, walking around in the wilderness, setting up camp here and there, until all of those that said no had died off. So now it's their kids and their grandkids who are being told, let's go do this thing. And they have a different answer because they say, okay. He says, the land I am giving you to possess. You look at the next slide, and you see, what are they doing? They're stirring. I'm not really sure what they're making. Looks almost like cornstarch, but I'm not sure what it is. They've got a big tub, and they've got a big stick, and they're stirring it all up. Making something. Probably a mess. 
Can you imagine the three days in that camp? In three days, we're going to go and cross the Jordan into enemy territory. Do you think it was a calm three days? A little bit frantic. Imagine if I were to say to you, and I almost did, but I knew somebody wouldn't like it, so I didn't. Everybody get up and move two rows forward and two spots to the left. There's nobody that would have to go to the back except for a couple here because nobody sits that far forward most of the time. Whenever I do something like that, people say, well, I don't like that spot. I like my old spot, my old way. Remember a few years ago, somebody sat in a different spot because we had a combined service. They normally sat over here. On this one Sunday, they sat over here, and they liked it. Think, listen to this. They liked the new spot better. They could see everything better. Everything just, they heard things. It was all better. But they said, ah, we're comfortable over here. Yes, that's a better spot. We can see the screens. We can see you. We can hear better. We're going back to where it's less good because that spot, that cushion is shaped for my backside. Been there 300 years. I want to break in a new seat cushion. We're not like that, are we? A little more than we sometimes want to admit. But I think God says to us also, it's time. Faith Lutheran Church. It's time to quit being comfortable. Time to quit being safe. It's time to move forward. The things we'll see in these next weeks talking about what Joshua is leading them into is, I think, a direct message for us at this time in this place. Shift gears. Something has to change. So let's do that thing. And that might mean you have to readjust. That might mean you're not going to like every step of the way. But if we follow God faithfully in his direction, victory is ours. The next slide, kind of a goofy one. Imagine that's the Holy Spirit. It doesn't look that way, I know. It's described as a wind. The Holy Spirit nudging. If we aren't spending time in the Word of God, if we as a church and we individually are not spending time in the Word of God and in prayer, we're going to go off this way and that because we'll have no idea what God has in mind for us. So it's about the Word of God we need to be first and foremost in worship, in Bible study, in devotions, prayer time. And as we do that and listen to what God says and then do something about what God says, so much changes. The Lord your God is providing you a place of rest and will give you this land. Is providing, will give you. No question, right? And then the next slide, he's talking to those who live across the Jordan who are going to come with them until the Lord gives rest to your brothers as he has to you, and they also take possession of the land Lord has God and given to you. So again, gives rest, gives you the land. Both of these two slides repeat what was said earlier. If you follow the one who's going to give, you're going to get what he's giving. And so they are told, follow God. And then, whenever I read this next section, I kind of, 
I cringe a little bit. And maybe you'll see it as we read it. They answered Joshua, All that you have commanded us, we will do. Wherever you send us, we will go. And now it's these next words. Just as we obeyed Moses in all things, so we will obey you. Whenever I read that sentence, I think, now wait a minute. It took you 40 years to get here because you didn't obey Moses. And while I was their grandparents and parents. But what this new generation is saying, we're not like our parents. We're going to keep listening. We're going to do what God says do. If God is calling, we are going to respond to his call, and he will show us victory. Rebels against your commandments and disobeys your words, whatever you command, they're going to be put to death. If we don't listen, kill us. If they don't listen, kill them. We'd rather have it be if they don't listen rather than if we don't listen, right? And so they are saying we are going to stand strong. We're going to see what God has in mind. We're going to look at all of this. (coughs) And God... Because God is the one who can bless us. We can't bless ourselves. If we get up and go face these people, they will just mop the floor with us or mop the desert with us. What a mess it'll be. As we stand strong, as we are strong and very courageous, doing what God says do, whether it's then or now. God brings the victory. In the Hebrews reading, read earlier, God desired to show more convincingly to the heirs of the promise the unchangeable character of his purpose. He guaranteed it with an oath so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled for refuge might have strong encouragement to hold fast to the hope set before us. We have this as a sure and steadfast anchor of our soul, a hope that enters into the, into the inner place behind the curtain where Jesus has gone as a forerunner on our behalf. So in Hebrews, they are being told, God doesn't lie. God keeps his promise. God keeps his word. So as we follow faithfully, as we saw those in the past, when they followed faithfully, God continued and continued and continued to bring blessing. And he says, we have this as a sure anchor for our souls. Read with me those words. Don't get dizzy, but read with me those words. I can do. Now say it like you mean it. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. If we take out the through him, or if we just stop with all things, I can do all things. No. Through him who strengthens me, I can do all things. Through him who strengthens us, we can do all things that God calls us to do. Does that mean that afterwards we can walk out into the street and stand in front of a car and stop traffic when they hit us? They'll go boom and bounce off? Only if that's God's will. But I don't think that's God's will. That's just being stupid. But as we listen, again, by time in his word and in prayer, in word and in prayer. What does God want for us and from us? And then we move. We act. 
we stand strong and we see what he is doing for us. Read also the next words. Then they'll come in here. Okay, read those. Again, read it again. This section, read it. Good words, those. Hard words, those. But true words, those. I believe God is trying to mix it up a little bit. I believe God is trying to stir us. When I brought in the wooden spoon, when I walked in the door today, some of those who maybe, maybe saw one of these and felt one of these as a kid said, uh-oh, who's in trouble now? Because this is a pretty good guide, isn't it? God wants us to be stirred. He doesn't want to have to... He wants us to be led along by his Holy Spirit. Now we are stirring. Now God is stirring. What is he preparing? He knows it will be sweet, like that cookie I talked about earlier, as God does the work. Amen. And now may the peace that we have only knowing and trusting his power and his promise, may that peace guide your hearts and even your minds through faith in Christ. Amen.